Castillo de San Marcos, the oldest masonry fort in the United States. Located on the western shore of the Matanzas River in St. Augustine, Florida. This historic fortification changed hands many times, but was never defeated in battle. It was besieged twice, a location where runaway slaves were freed and served as a prison during its storied lifetime. Construction of Castillo de San Marcos began in 1672, when Florida was still part of the Spanish Empire. The fort was built to repel raids by English privateers who had ravaged several wooden forts since the establishment of St. Augustine in 1565. The Spanish needed to build a stronger fortification to protect their interests in the Americas. Castillo de San Marcos is a square with diamond-shaped bastions at each corner. This shape allowed for defensive fire in all directions. The walls are made from coquina, a soft limestone comprised of broken seashells. They stood 27 feet high and averaged 12 feet thick. The fort is surrounded by a moat, which was usually kept dry. The south curtain houses the entrance to the fort, which is protected by a ravelin and two drawbridges. To the east of the fort is a seawall on the edge of the Matanzas River. This first phase of construction was completed in 1695. The Castillo de San Marcos would undergo several renovations and upgrades over its lifetime. Shortly after completion of the initial construction, the fortress received its first test. In 1702, during Queen Anne's War, English forces laid siege to Castillo de San Marcos. The English besieged the fort for 50 days until Spanish reinforcements arrived from Cuba. Following this attack, the Castillo de San Marcos underwent a second period of construction. Interior wooden ceilings were replaced with masonry vaults which raised the fort walls to 33 feet. In 1740, the English again laid siege to Castillo de San Marcos. This attack also proved ineffective. The coquina walls of the fort were soft enough that they absorbed the English cannonballs. In 1762, another period of construction began. A glacis was built supported by a counterscarp. This rise in the land would ensure any attackers would be forced uphill directly into cannon fire. In 1763, Florida was handed over to England as part of the treaty that ended the Seven Years' War, known in America as the French and Indian War. After England gained control, Castillo de San Marcos was renamed to Fort St. Mark. British occupation did not last long, and Florida was returned to Spain in 1784 following the United States' War for Independence. For the next several decades, there were many skirmishes and disputes between the United States and Spanish Florida. Spain realized it could no longer maintain possession of Florida and ceded it to the United States. The Spanish left Castillo de San Marcos for the last time in 1821. The fort's name was changed once again, this time to Fort Marion. Some minor changes to the fort took place. The seawall was rebuilt, part of the moat was filled in for a battery, and a furnace was built to heat cannonballs for firing at wooden ships. For the remainder of its years of service, the fort was used mainly to house prisoners from the Seminole Wars and Indian Wars of the West. Castillo de San Marcos was controlled by the Confederate forces during the Civil War, but did not see any combat. In 1900, the fort was removed from active duty, ending more than two centuries of service for multiple authorities. Today, Castillo de San Marcos stands as a reminder of America's complicated colonial history and is a great place to visit to reflect on the past. If you want to see more things like this in the future, hit the subscribe button. 
If you'd like to support what I'm doing, head over to my website where you can purchase my newest documentary, 